Hello and welcome to another fabulous episode of Thyroid Refresh TV, a podcast dedicated to helping you live a thyroid healthy lifestyle. We're so glad to be back with you again today. I'm Dana Bowman. And I'm Ginny Mahar, and we are the dynamic duo behind Thyroid Refresh and Thyroid 30. And we're thrilled to be here today with Dr. Donnie Wilson to talk about medication intolerance. What happens when we can no longer take our meds? This is going to be a really good one, guys. So welcome, Dr. Donnie. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I just love this resource you created, and I'm happy to be able to be support however you guys need me. Thank you. Thank you for that. For those few people out there who don't know very much about Dr. Donnie Wilson, she is a naturopathic doctor, certified professional midwife, and certified nutrition specialist, graduated from Bastyr University in 2000. She's the best-selling author of The Stress Remedy. Dr. Donnie redefines stress to include toxins, food sensitivities, and imbalanced blood sugar levels, and then offers expert guidance on how to reclaim optimal health. She is the creator of a health transformation program with step-by-step -step support to implement clean eating, improved sleep, stress reduction, and exercise, the Stress Remedy Program. And she specializes in helping people get to the underlying causes, including genetic predispositions, and reverse adrenal distress, thank goodness, autoimmunity, HPV, and cervical dysplasia, and infertility. And you can find her online at drdonnie.com. And she joined me when I had, when I was in charge of Thyroid Nation Radio. I had her on the show two or three times. She's one of my favorite people. She's a fantastic mm -hmm. dancer. Had the privilege of meeting her in person for the first time last August. And we're really just excited to have you on the show with us today here at Thyroid Refresh TV. Thank you. Thank you, Dana, for that introduction. That's so sweet. It's so much fun dancing with you, too. We have to do that again soon. <laughs> we're gonna. We're definitely, we're gonna. Okay, uh, before we dive in, uh, we always like to ask um, our guests to tell them a little bit more about themselves. Um, also, what got you interested in naturopathic medicine? So just give everybody just a little tiny bit about who Dr. Donnie is. Sure. You know, I say that I grew up in a pharmacy because my father's a pharmacist and the, we moved a lot when I was growing up on the West Coast. But the thing that was consistent in my childhood was being in the pharmacy a lot. And you would think I would have gone more down that path in, you know, in my future. But what actually ended up happening is my father at home did much more emphasis on the prevention of health issues and preventing the need for um, medications. And so I became very interested in food as medicine and you know, time in nature and sleep and supporting our health. Um, and so when I was doing my pre-med degree, I also studied nutrition and I realized I wanted to study a type of medicine that included nutrition, and that's when I uh, found Bastyr University and went to Bastyr in Seattle. And the thing is, is that um, when I went to Bastyr, I was very much also interested in women's health, and so I also trained to be a midwife. Um, and part of that midwifery training, I became very interested in studying stress of women in labor, especially women who had a history of abuse. Um, and what would what is that fear of labor, which I think um, a lot of us could relate to that, you know, fear of what's going to happen in labor. And the thing I really learned from those women that I studied is that we need a certain amount of stress in order for labor to progress in, in a smooth way. So we need some stress in our lives, basically, and we need some stress during labor. But if women have too much stress and not enough support in labor, labor comes to a standstill. So it's a matter of finding where is that place in the middle where we can do the things we love and, and being a parent or having a job or having a project like you guys and creating this, this platform, there's stress that's involved and that's part of being human, but we also need that stress support and recovery so that it doesn't have a negative effect on us. And so I, when I graduated, I moved to the tri-state area right after 9-11. And so it was one of the most stressful times in this area. And I decided, hey, let me use this same model that I learned from women in labor and use it for everyone, you know, who's under stress and understanding that 
as humans, we have a built-in stress response, but we also need to recognize our built-in need for stress recovery and support. And that I can actually do certain tests to help us understand exactly how stress is affecting a certain person, um, including based on their genetic tendencies and predispositions. And then I can help by helping that person to address their genetics and recover from their stress exposure that we can address most any health issue. As you mentioned, I focus a lot on on some women's health related things like uh, fertility and, and hormonal imbalances and um, HPV. But um, really with any from digestive issues and I help men as well who are dealing with anything from you know hormone imbalances like thyroid what we're going to talk about today to um, sleep issues and anxiety and depression because to me it's a matter of understanding how each of us is uniquely affected by stress and how then we need what can we do to help the body recover and rebalance and get back to a healthy baseline um, and I have to say that I also over the years, learned a lot from my own health story um, because all of this time, over you know 25 years that I was in naturopathic school and then practicing as a naturopathic doctor and seeing thousands of patients, I myself was experiencing severe migraines. Um, so I would get these migraines that would make it so that I couldn't even see patients that day. I would be out for days recovering, but I was ashamed because I felt like I'm the naturopathic doctor. I should be able to figure this out. So I really never told anyone that I was experiencing all of this pain, but all the while I was figuring out how to solve it. And it's by figuring out my migraines. Now I don't get those migraines anymore. Uh, it's been a couple years since the last one. Now that I've solved my migraines and I know what to do to help my body based on my genetics and my stress exposure, I realized this is what is helping my, helping my patients. And so I'm more and more talking about that and sharing that in you know, various ways to say, hey, this is some, there's things we can do to solve health issues. And that's exactly how, you know, we can talk more about thyroid today, but that's exactly how I look at the thyroid as well. You know, how can we look at your unique genetic predispositions and your unique stress exposures and understand what your body needs to stay healthy and feel well? Before we jump into uh, thyroid and medications, <clears throat> I wanted to just mention something that I learned from you on um, one of the Thyroid Nation radio shows that has mm -hmm. stuck with me mm -hmm. uh, regarding stress. And that is, you know, I always, uh, growing up in my life, I just, I would hear stress and I would say, oh my God, I, I have to get rid of my stress. I mean, you know, and, or you would like, I have all these meetings and I just, all this stress is just too much for me. I've just got to, you know, and, um, I never looked at it like managing stress. Like you're never going to get rid of it. So it felt, always felt like this perpetual, this mm -hmm. treadmill I was always on. It was felt, felt like this big thing I could never really accomplish mm -hmm. doing anything about or really, you know, jump over the hurdle. I always just felt like this big thing, stress. Okay. Yeah. I know I need to deal with it. Check. But it's just this thing that I'm, it's never really going to be manageable. Mm -hmm. And when I had you on the show, I remember you saying, you know, look, you're always going to have stress and we need stress. Just like you were mentioning earlier, the, the key is to have tools and tips and to do some things for yourself to manage the stress and to know and to find and watch for the triggers and things because you're always going to have stress. It's just never going to go away. Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking you're going to, oh, you really need to hurry up and do all these things and make some money so that you can retire and live on an island and then you won't have any stress, <laughs> that's really just not the plan. That's really not what you need to be thinking because you're always going to have it and you do need it. And so when you said that, I was like, oh, right. Why didn't I think of that? Why couldn't I think of that? So it's one of my favorite things that I know that you talk about. And I thank you for bringing that up because it really is a big deal managing well, stress is, it is and it's it, if we what the studies show is if we stress about stress right? it's worse you know right. if we think of stress as negative it's actually worse on our body so we need to we need to tweak it we need to do a little shift a mind shift and go okay we sh stress is just part of life we don't need to be stressing or negative about the stress we need to just be noticing and aware of the stress and then take steps to help our body with it yeah absolutely mm -hmm. love that 
Well, and thank you so much for sharing your background. What an amazing story. And I can just totally see how your background and your childhood led you to where you are today with, you know, looking at the body as a whole and optimizing health and what an incredible um, influence you had from your father. Yeah, yeah, it's, thank you for saying that. I really, I do feel so grateful. And and I think for me, it, it meant that at a young age, probably maybe younger than some people, I was thinking about and questioning health, you know, and what would I want to do for my health? And, um, and realizing that there's options, you know, because sometimes I think we can feel like we're, there's only one path, you know, like we're supposed to go to this practitioner for this opinion and do what they say. And there's only, you know, like go this one path. But um, because of my background, I had this more expanded view at a young age where I realized there's many ways that we can potentially support our body. And there's many forms of medicine and yes, we need pharmaceutical medications for certain situations and they can be beneficial and of course necessary. So it's not that we don't need them at all. It's just that we want to recognize, okay, they have a specific purpose and we want to use them for that purpose. But if there's other things we can do that could help our bodies function better on their own, then maybe we aren't as reliant on a medication that, and that we of course know that medications can have side effects and, you know, lead to other health issues. So we, we want to keep that critical, you know, um, um, mindset about it and realize, Hey, they have a purpose, but it doesn't mean that there's a magic pill or a perfect, you know, pill that's going to solve everything. That's a, that's an illusion right? It's, we need to kind of stand back and go, what do I really want to do for my body, for my health, for my future, and then decide from there. Well, and you know, how appropriate is that for us to hear as thyroid patients is just so on point, you know, we have to, we need to have those options, right? But we are somewhat reliant on our thyroid medication. So why don't we, why don't we go ahead and talk about medication Mm -hmm. and tolerance? Because for a community of people who is really reliant on medication in addition to all those other, you know, diet and lifestyle and mindset factors. It can be scary when we come to a place where our medication isn't working for us anymore. And we were really inspired to reach out to you, Dr. Donnie, because this is an issue that we've heard about from members of our community um, last season one of the players on my thyroid 30 team just went through this during our spring Mm -hmm. wellness adventure. And she said, you know, this certain medication used to work great for me, but now I can't take it. It makes me feel weird and have heart symptoms. You know, that's just one example from several similar examples we've heard where people feel sick or weird or, you know, the heart palpitations and other symptoms. And, you know, the first thought is often, are you overdosed? Are you, are you just on too much medication? Have you had your labs done lately? But often the reply is, my tests show I'm not overdosed, mm-hmm. but taking my meds is making me sick. So mm-hmm. we're excited to dive into this with you. What What is going on when that happens? What are some of the causes of medication intolerance? Well, I'm glad you're saying causes as a plural, because I definitely think it's, you know, more than one possibility and could be, could be unique to each person, but also could be multiple things going, multiple variables. I call them variables, right? If we think of your health, we go, what are the, all the variables going on in your body right now? And let's understand, like when my first thought is when someone says that to me, I think, well, let's think through what happened, what's different about your life maybe over the past three three months or six months even, even if you're just noticing this now, I want to look back a little bit because sometimes there can be a, what I would consider a stress exposure that happened six months ago that might have a delay before you start kind of having this ripple effect, you know, this wave of stress come through your body and your system and it could shift how your body's responding and how your thyroid's functioning, um, you know, over a delayed period of time. So one of my first thoughts is just sit down and think back, like what's different in my life in the past 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, you know, what's going on differently? And you're even saying this happened during this, this kind of challenge or during this shift. So it makes me also wonder, maybe there were some 
you know, in, in that person's case, maybe even a more recent um, change in diet, change in sleep patterns, change in exercise. Um, so these, all of these can be variables. Now, I tend to refer to them as stresses, but some of these are not things that you would normally think of as a stress. Like, I mean, there's the stresses we usually think of, right? Like financial stress or a death or in the family or grief or divorce, you know, these are the big stresses, which of course we, we experience in life. But I would say any kind of shift in your body would be considered a stress to me. So if it's, even if it's a positive change, right, we're talking about how stress can be a good thing, changing your diet or your exercise, getting yourself to exercise can be a good thing, but it's also a little bit of a stress on your system that could even change the way you respond to, say, a thyroid hormone that you're taking. So just kind of, um, first of all, I'll, it makes me even want to stand back a second and say, I always approach um, a person in the body with acceptance and awareness. So instead, because sometimes we tend to um, kind of criticize our body or judge it or kind of be negative, like, why is my body responding this way? You know what I mean? Almost with a negative viewpoint. So I want to just stand back and go, okay, what if we look at it as instead of like a, a criticism or a negative, or why is this happening to me, right? This kind of negative view. Instead, if we look at it as, hmm, let me be curious about this. Why is this happening? You see what I mean? Like in a curious way, mm -hmm. like if there's not something wrong per se, it's more like, hmm, something's different. Let's get curious about it and see why is my body responding differently than it was before. And sometimes then we can identify it. It might be, might even be that you, um, you moved and you're in a different house and you have different toxin exposures and or you got new furniture or you got a, or you're, you, somebody, somebody else is living in your house who's not usually there. And so you have a different kind of psychological stress experience going on, or maybe you've not been sleeping well, or your pet died, or your or you have a new pet sleeping in the bed with you, you know, sort of think of all these different variables that could shift, because I think we kind of forget that almost like a plant, right? Like, we would expect this from a plant, right? If you move a plant from one location to another location, we kind of expect that it its leaves might be wilted and it might, <laughs> right? Like it might not respond the same way. Right, but great we, analogy. But we think of ourselves as if we're sort of like a robot, that we're supposed to do the same thing predictably every day. But no, our, our bodies are as responsive as a plant or maybe more responsive. So think about, yes, think about that first, I would say, because sometimes it can, like, especially right now, I've been hearing from a lot of people who've been very stressed with the situations going on in the world right now. Um, and they're picking up on these kind of changes in their body that they hadn't noticed before. And they're like, why is this? You know, like sometimes when I hear a lot about is hair loss, right? People will be like, my hair, which is a common thyroid symptom, right? So you might be like, wait a minute, why is my hair falling out? Why am I more tired? Why am I, maybe your digestion is shifting and you're thinking these are thyroid symptoms, right? Like these are, now once you become aware of it, right? You're like, wait a minute, my, my hair is falling out. I'm more tired. I might be gaining weight. My, my digestion's off. Could this be my thyroid? Is my Am I responding differently to my thyroid, you know, prescription, or is there something else going on with my thyroid? And quite possibly, there is something going on with your thyroid because what we also know is that when our cortisol levels go up, it affects our thyroid hormone. And so, if cortisol levels are high, and if cortisol levels are low, for that matter, which is our stress hormone, right? So, if our cortisol levels are too high or too low, it's going to throw off our thyroid function. If you don't mind, I want to just clarify that. Sure. So when I think about, you know, you're saying um, thyroid medication, and this can vary, of course, for each person. But for the most part, when you're taking some sort of thyroid hormone replacement, is how I think of it, right? It's a, what you're essentially taking is thyroid hormone in a pill right? It's going to be maybe just T4. It might be T4 and T3 together. It might be synthetic, right? It might be from a, a synthetic man-made source of T4 and T3, or it might be from an animal source of T4 and T3, which would be like a armor or nature droid or, you know, like a glandular source. So, so you're either taking T4, T3 as synthetic 
or animal source, T4 and T3. But here's the thing is it's, a, it's, a, it's meant to just fill in the gap of your thyroid function, right? So the way I think of it, and I, I don't know, I hope this is helpful, but um, when I heard this, I was like, oh, this makes it so much more sense. If you think of the thyroid gland, if the thyroid gland was fully functioning on its own, it would be, let's say, I would think of it as a one, two, three, right? So if your thyroid gland was, if you could have a visual, right? It would be like a, a level three doing all of it on its own. You know, you don't need any thyroid hormone replacement because your thyroid is doing the full job on its own. T4 production, and I'm sure you guys have talked about how T4 has to get converted to T3. So your body's doing it all on its own, like looks like this. What happens is when we're exposed to stress and we're exposed to toxins and we might have thyroid antibodies, right? The Hashimoto's thyroid antibodies attacking our thyroid gland, then the thyroid function drops a little bit. We have nutrient deficiencies it drops. So now your thyroid might be, maybe it's doing two thirds of that. Maybe it's only getting to a two instead of a three, or maybe it's doing only half of the work on its own, right? But for most people, their thyroid gland is still doing some amount of the work. You see what I mean? Like right. the thyroid has made it, maybe it's only doing a quarter of the work, or maybe it's doing half, or maybe it's doing three quarter of the work. And then the, the med medication, as we call it, or the thy thyroid hormone replacement is filling in that gap. That's what the intention is, is that it's supposed to just fill in that space that your thyroid function is not doing. So whenever someone says they feel like they're no longer getting the same benefit from their prescription, whatever it is, right away, I always want to start to think, well, how much of it is that they are not responding well to that same prescription or how much of it is that their thyroid itself shifted, right? Like mm -hmm. how much did the thyroid function shift. Maybe previously their thyroid was doing half of the work and all of a sudden because of what's going on in their life, maybe their thyroid is doing less or more of the work. And that can affect the dose or even the response to the particular formula that you're using. So that's one thing I want to point out is you always want to think through like what part of this might be just something that's different in my body or my thyroid function and that's why, you know, you can get some of that from testing as we talk, you know, we can, you want to, as soon as you start to feel like something's different with my thyroid, do a test, you know, because that at least can give you some information. It's, we know that these tests are not exactly as, you know, the specific as we wish they were. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. important to recognize that, you know, yes, I would recommend getting a TSH and a free T3 and a free T4, those are, if you were gonna get three tests to evaluate your thyroid function and your response to a certain medication, I would wanna get a, see a TSH, free T3 and free T4. You can also get the reverse T3 so you can see how the conversion is doing and you may wanna check your thyroid antibodies too because sometimes I find that a person's feeling like they're responding differently to their medication, but it might actually be that the thyroid antibodies are flaring. So we want to check that too and see, hey, is it just that there's a flare in the antibodies and that's why something doesn't feel right? So it'd be good if you, if you um, recheck your thyroid antibody levels. And a lot of times doctors don't, a lot of times they don't do any of those tests. Maybe they just do the TSH. They don't usually think to recheck the thyroid antibodies. So you may have to ask your practitioner or pay out of pocket to do it on your own so that you can actually see, hey, and you, you, this way you can kind of track on your own, hey, what were my thyroid antibodies last year? What am I, when I'm feeling off, let me check the thyroid antibodies and see if they changed. Let me check, and then check your TSH and your free T3 and free T4. So you really know where you are all the time. I mean, I think that, I don't know if you guys already encourage that, but. Oh, mm -hmm. yes, 100%. And right? yeah, always a great place to start with getting tested and seeing where your levels are at. But I'm so glad you brought up all those other factors because it really takes time to eliminate variables. And we don't live in a vacuum. It's right. rare, if not impossible, that the only factor in your life that's different right now is just uh, I feel like it's my medication not agreeing with me. Like you said, look at what's going on in the world right now. How many of us are having anxiety symptoms that we don't even know are anxiety mm -hmm. symptoms? 
Mm -hmm. Or I think about supplements too. I know I always try to make a habit of when I'm introducing new supplements to only introduce one at a time over Mm -hmm. a couple weeks because Mm -hmm. some of them make me feel kind of weird. I've gotten things like, you know, the heart palpitations or Mm -hmm. all kinds of, you know, sometimes certain things just don't agree with you. And to maybe as just a, an actionable tip in addition to getting the testing done, make a list, like you said, even the furniture in your house. Did you get a new mattress that's mm-hmm. off-gassing or mm-hmm. what? Are mm-hmm. you drinking more coffee now that, you know, we're all staying home more? Mm-hmm. You know, all those things come into play. And mm-hmm. lastly, I just want to thank you for bringing up the the mindset piece of don't be mad at your body for this. You know, we we talk about that as, um, and I think this is a big part of our mission is helping people shift mm-hmm. from a place of aggression towards our bodies to a place of compassion and mm-hmm. always coming back to that, mm-hmm. you know, that mm-hmm. wrapping our arms around ourselves and saying, what can I do to help you, honey? Mm-hmm. Right. What's going on here? Let's Let figure this out instead of my body's letting me down again. Right. You know? Letting it be a light bulb moment. Let it, it being, you know, your hair's falling out. So the first thing you want to do is go oh, and instead go, oh, thank you. Okay. Something's going on. You know, I need mm-hmm. to be paying attention. Thank you for the signal. Thank you for the sign. Thank you for the light bulb. Oh, okay. You were trying to tell me before I wasn't paying attention. Now a couple my hair in the, is in the drain. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'll pay attention now. I really get it now. Right. (laughs) Thank your body for, for uh, talking to you in a way. Yeah. Are there other factors though, that like where people really, their bodies really are just rejecting the medication. Can we talk about that? Are there Mm -hmm. allergic Mm -hmm. reactions or things like that, that happen? Yeah, yeah, let's do. So yes, there's, so once you've kind of considered all of these possibilities, and by the way, I think it's because I lived a lot of my life with migraines that I, because I'm so sensitive to everything. So I had to, for myself, start to pay attention to all those things. So that's when I, I can re, you know, see and understand that, that some of you are going to be that sensitive. Like people go, oh, it couldn't possibly be that sensitive. No, you you could. You could be that sensitive and your body could be responding. And my my body would have triggered a migraine. Maybe some of you also get migraines when, you're, when your thyroid's off track. And it, it really does, you know, teach you. It does, like, like Dan is saying, it, it's like this light bulb that says something's off. I need to change and figure out what's going on. And so once you do that process of elimination and you look at your your hormone levels and maybe the, maybe your um, blood levels come back pretty on track. You're like, Oh, my TSH is at a one, my T3, T4 are right in the mid range or right where I usually feel good. So you're like, well, it doesn't seem like my thyroid functioning shifted at all. It seems like it's some other factor in the actual um, thyroid hormone replacement that I'm taking. So once you've kind of gone through this process of elimination and you're like, it seems like it's this formula that something changed. Now, I would first think, well, maybe the formula did change. Go research online and find out. Sometimes they change these formulas. Sometimes they add a filler. Sometimes maybe it didn't have gluten before and now it does have gluten. Maybe they tweaked it a little bit and they don't always tell you that. So you could be getting the same bottle from the same place and it actually could have changed inside that little pill. So trust yourself. If you have a feeling like something changed, first, you know, say, hey, did something change in this? Because that has happened and people have figured out, oh my gosh, I'm actually responding to some filler or some change in the in the formula that maybe not everybody is, is body is picking up on, but maybe your body is. So where do we get that information? Do we contact the manufacturer? Yeah. I mean, you could start, like, if you get it from a pharmacist, you could try asking the pharmacist first or the practitioner. But yeah, if you, if, if that's not getting you that right information, then yeah, I would contact the manufacturer or search online because I think then you might be able to find, like, you can look at, um, usually find the ingredients, like say it's a, um, a standard pharmaceutical or a standard, you know, um, say nature's you can find the ingredients 
on, on, from the manufacturer mm -hmm. and on different websites online. And it'd be good for you to know anyway right now. So you know, hey, what, what's in there now? <laughs> and that way you know and keep a file for yourself somewhere so then you can compare later if it ever changes, you, you can see it right away. You can go, oh, they change what's in, right? We often just take this pill and we're never even thinking what's in there besides thyroid hormone, but they do put other fillers in there. And I find that a lot of people do better with the formulas that have the fewest fillers. And I think this is because I do a lot of work with food sensitivities and digestive issues as well and leaky gut, something called leaky gut. Um, and I think this could be also a factor as to why sometimes people become intolerant to certain formulas is because um, leaky gut is, is when um, the intestinal cells, so normally we have lining our intestinal walls are these little cells all lined up next to each other. And the job of those little cells is to make sure that our food gets fully digested. And so then our nutrients can get through the intestinal wall to get into our bodies. But what happens is when we're stressed or exposed to toxins and certain medications and antibiotics, there's damage and gluten damages these intestinal cells. And so now food that's not digested can leak through and trigger an immune response. But the same thing could happen from um, some formula, some, you know, depending on which product you might be taking. It's a little less likely with the synthetically derived hormone formulas, but with the more like animal-based glandular formulas, like say Armour, for example, or Nature Throid, Nature Throid they're an animal proteins in there. So if there's leaky gut and that starts leaking through, it's possible the immune system might start reacting to it or might start reacting to some substance in the formula. So I would also take it as a chance to say, hey, is it possible that your body, your immune system is actually reacting to or having an, an inflammatory immune response to something in the formula, which that could happen at any point in time. You might be taking this for 10 years and all of a sudden you're like, I think I'm reacting to this thing. And it could be that then we need to switch the formula and heal the leaky gut so that you're no longer reacting to, because you might also, if you're noticing you're reacting to foods and other things in your environment, like if you're going, hey, it's, I'm reacting, I think I'm reacting to my thyroid medication, but I think I'm also reacting to more foods and I'm sneezing and I'm reacting to pollen and mold, then you might be like, oh, or if you had mold exposure, for example, which also is an issue in the digestion, then you start to realize, oh, it's, it's the thyroid issue, but it's also my body's just in a hyper responsive mode and I need to help calm things down and heal the digestion. And in the meantime, like anytime you do, even if I would say if, if a patient said to me, I think I'm intolerant or I'm reacting to this formula that I'm currently taking, one of the easiest things to do is just switch to a different formula and then see if you feel better. You know, because you can, there are options. That's the one thing is like, sometimes we can feel like, we're out of options. But when it comes to thyroid hormone, there really are quite a few options, even um, in terms of, because say you're, say you're taking a synthetic formula, maybe you're taking, the basic would be like a synthroid, right? T4, basic T4, which we know, this is the thing for me is with T4, I think a lot of people still have thyroid symptoms when they're taking Synthroid because it doesn't, doesn't necessarily get converted well to T3. That's in the research it shows. So if you're taking a Synthroid and you still have thyroid symptoms, that's less of an intolerance per se and more like just not an effective dose, right? We need to try adding in some T3 or changing to a different formula. Um, if a person, say, is taking a synthetic T4 and T3 combination, um, those tend to be more hypoallergenic. Um, so those might be, like if, on the other hand, if, say, a person's taking a glandular, like, say, Armour or Nature Throid, that's more often where I'll hear people say, I think I'm intolerant. I don't know if that person you were mentioning, if she, which one, which formula was she taking? Do you know? She was on Tyrosin. She had been on but, some okay. other things, but she ended up on Tyrosin, which was kind of surprising because mm -hmm. it's so hypoallergenic. Yeah, it tends to be more hypoallergenic, whereas the glandular formulas, which is the ones that are made from an animal source, usually either cow or um, 
you know, so it's like you can look at where, what was the actual source? Was it a pig um, glandular? Was it a cow glandular? Some people, if they really prefer a glandular source of thyroid hormone, I've had some patients say, I think I'm reacting to the pig source and they changed to the cow source. I don't know if you, if people have shared that one where they, they might find, Hey, I think I, cause I think it can be almost like a food sensitivity to a protein, right? If you think about it, like if a person's reacting to say a person reacts to beef, they probably should choose the pig version. If a person reacts to pork or doesn't do well with pork, they should choose the cow derived um, thyroid mm -hmm. hormone. So you, it can be a literally like an immune response to what that substance is derived from. That. Or if you find you're really not doing well, or all of a sudden you're reacting to all of the animal glandulars, you might want to switch to a synthetic. So this would be like tyrosine or what I find for a lot of people I help is, um, is to use a, um, a T4, T3 that's specifically formulated for that person. So you can actually find practitioners who can decide instead of like a standard tyrosine, right? That kind of comes as a standard dose from a standard pharmaceutical company. You can do a compounded formula where you would have like exactly the amount of T4 that you want, exactly the amount of T3 that you want, and you can actually choose which fillers do you want. What's the most hypoallergenic filler with your T4, T3? So the, I would say if you're noticing that you're really reactive, then you might want to find someone who can formulate that specifically for you, even if it's for a period of time. You know, it might only be for a, a few months or a year while you uh, figure out what are the other toxins in my environment? Does, do I have leaky gut and need to address that? How's my cortisol level? Do I need to address that? Like, let's, because usually to me, when the body starts reacting like that, it's telling me that, you know, this analogy of the cup being full, right? Like we're like, we can have a certain number of variables and stresses, right? And our body can adapt and respond and we're doing fine. But when a certain number of variables adds up, this cup spills over. And I think of this medication intolerance as prob and a lot of times it's an example of the cup spilling over. It's the body saying, I, now I'm not going to respond to that either. I'm going to be reactive to that, you know, because I'm, there's something out of balance in here. So I take it as a sign that something's out of balance, something, something else, you know, is it a, and I tend to, of course, with this, this um, structure that I've, that I've found really helps over time is I tend to look at it from this per stress perspective. What are the different stresses that we can help your body to either eliminate or resolve or recover from so that your cup isn't so full? And then you might find you can go back to that, that medication or that, um, that substance later and be fine with it. Mm. Is that, does that help? Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. So fascinating. Yeah. I'm, well, and it's funny because we're all so different and what works for each of us is different. And Dana loves her nature throid and I, I tried it and it really didn't work for me. It made me feel terrible. I, I was reacting to it. It put me on like a hypo hyper roller coaster. Mm -hmm. I could never get in the sweet spot and a light bulb went off for me when you were talking about the food sensitivities because I worked with our resident holistic nutritionist of it, Adrienne Klein, and we did some testing and she was like, I'm not really sure you should eat pork. Mm. And Nature Throid is a porcine product. Yeah. So I wonder if that had something to do with it. But yeah, now I'm on tyrosine and very happy with it in addition to a compounded um, T3. Mm -hmm. at, you know, that's just just right for me. And I, it took me, you know, honestly, it took about a year. I really, I made it a goal of mine. I'm going to get my opti my medication optimized. I'm going to work with my naturopath. I'm going to do the tests. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of tweaking. And yeah. it was funny, even when I switched to tyrosine, the initial dose I started on was too much. I had mm -hmm. to back down and work my way. Now I'm back at that initial dosage, but it was like, I had to sort of work my way back up to it. Are, are there any tips maybe for like switching medications? Do you recommend that people, um, what's mm -hmm. the word? Is it titrate? 
titrate well, up or and I think an important point you're making is to just go into it knowing that it's going to take some tweaks you know mm -hmm. very rarely do we hit it exactly on the first try that would be like over all these years of me helping people with thyroid, that would be remarkable to see, you know, to get the dose exactly right on a first try. I mean, that would be like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's even possible because we are dealing with our bodies that are, again, not robots. You know, we're not living in robot bodies. And so to just be ready to take a little time to go, okay, let me try my best guess at as close as I'm going to get. And maybe you want to try a glandular first and you're like, okay, let me try this. Let me, what I would usually do is um, if a person's already been taking some thyroid hormone, I look at what's the dose that they are currently taking, right? So we can go, okay, that's a ballpark number, you know, like, so if you, if you know, you've been taking 50 micrograms and we can look at your test results and see was that way too little or close, then what we do is we take that 50 micrograms and we do an equivalent in a different um, thyroid hormone support. So we can go, okay, let's do what's equivalent to 50 micrograms in a different formula and retest. Did you, how did your body respond on this different formula that's theoretically an equal amount? Because as logical as we think that would be, right? We're like, it's equivalent. The body should respond the same way, <laughs> but it's right. not necessarily the case. The, wow. it, you can have the same equivalent dose and the body can respond very different um, depending on the formula that you're taking. And so you want, you, it really is this lesson in being patient with your body and having awareness for how you feel and being curious about how your body's going to respond and then having acceptance for whatever that is. If you're like, oh, okay, my body did better on this one or my body did, like we can't be necessarily attached to the outcome, right? Which is, right. I think, a lesson for so much in life, right? There's <laughs> sometimes we're like, we wish it could be this, <laughs> but our body's teaching us that no, it can't always necessarily be exactly what we would like it to be. We need to just be like, okay, I, I know I'm, I'm committed to helping my body get to as much balance as possible, right? Like make a, a goal and a commitment to your body that's reasonable and attainable, right? Like I'm just committed to feeling my best, okay, as best as possible, right? So find something like that because then you're not as attached to being, you know, doing exactly what the other person is, right? Like, because someone else is not going to have exactly the same dose as you. So they can't be aiming for that. They need to be like, okay, that's what worked for you. Now let me see what's going to work for me. And it's going to be a process over time. And you're right. Sometimes I tend to go little tiny steps, like you said, titrate, but I like to, sometimes as practitioners, it can be tempting to kind of make a big jump you know, be like, oh, it looks like your TSH is really high. We better really raise your dose up. But the thing about TSH that I've seen is that TSH can really vary from person to person. So one person, two people could have like basically the same thyroid function. Let's say it's back to that kind of like, let's say their thyroid is at half functioning, right? Their TS, one person that TSH could be a three and another person their TSH could be a six. Right. So the TSH for each person is different for each, for their thyroid function, the same thyroid function, right? So you can't, you kind of, it gets tempting as a practitioner to, if you see a six on a TSH, it's like, oh, I'm going to jump up on this dose, but it doesn't usually work out very well because any again, any change in our body can be a signal of stress. So even raising your thyroid dose too quickly can be seen as your body as a stress. So I'd rather go in little increments. I'd rather go, okay, we might eventually have to get to a much higher dose, but let's go slowly because this way we're giving your body a chance to adapt and that thyroid hormone is going to signal to all the different hormones in your body. There's, it's going to take time. Like you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to retest your TSH I would say the soonest I would ever do it would be four weeks, but you know, usually the standard is six weeks. So you're giving it six weeks to gradually shift and get used to this new dose and new formula. 
So it takes time. But it, I also sometimes hear people say that they're waiting three months and that's too long. I wouldn't wait that long because then you might not be feeling well and you might be on the wrong dose for three months. That, that, mm. Don't do that to yourself. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you can recheck it in six weeks and see, hey, how's my TSH, which the way I think about TSH, and you, as you can see, I love to talk about all this, but I, TSH, I think of what your brain thinks of your thyroid function, right? So if, if TSH, your brain is going to take some time to think about how is this new thyroid dose? How is this new formula? How is it fitting in with everything else? So that's why you have to wait that at least four to six weeks before you recheck. And then you're really saying, what does my brain think of this new dose? when you're looking at a TSH. And if your TSH is closer to one, I like it between 0.5 and 1.5 when you're on thyroid hormone replacement. That tells me we've filled in that gap just perfectly when you get between 0.5 and 1.5. But of course, we're also going to look at the free T3 and free T4. And um, when you get to filling that gap perfectly, then you're like, okay, my brain is happy with the current thyroid dose right? <laughs> you like that? I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a great way of thinking about it. I mean, I know we're going to go over a little bit on our time here, if that's okay with you, Dr. Donnie, but yes. this is such important information and so fascinating. We really are so happy to share this with our community. So yeah, thank you for explaining that all so simply and eloquently and beautifully. Um, is it okay if we do just a couple more questions? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. And by the way, I um, it it makes me realize that I um, um, I live in the tri-state area, but I also practice in Phoenix and um, California. I have also um, practiced. So, you know, if you know, just so you guys have a sense of like, you know, okay. where where I'm where I'm located, and I help a lot of people. You know, once I kind of meet someone and we work on this, we can. We can, I do a lot of phone and video consultations, so you have a sense of how I do this. But yeah, I try to really find ways to, because I believe that the more you understand your body and how it's working, the, the more benefits your health. So I'm glad if that, if that talking that out helps in terms of, you mm -hmm. know, just, you know, getting that acceptance and understanding of your body and what you're aiming for. And if things feel off, okay, let's go back to that drawing board and see what what got tweaked out of place and get it back on balance again. Mm -hmm. Well, I really just liked how you suggested that the TSH had to kind of figure it out a little bit. You know, your brain had to figure out whether the TSH, how it was talking to each other. Like, is this happy? Give me some time. I'll let you know. <laughs> Recheck. I liked that, you know, because it, it really speaks to, um, you know, your body processing. Mm-hmm. Well, in weeks to our hormones, I mean, I'm super sensitive to anything I put in my body, but, you know, I remember when I was using hormonal birth control and things, just the tiniest tweak, it was like, whoa, what yeah. just happened? You know? yeah. <laughs> and the body really ne needs to adjust. Yeah. Um, we were talking about this before the show a little bit, just with all the uncertainty that's going on in our world right now of just, you know, I think this has been a question in the back of many a thyroid patient's mind. Worst case scenario, um, maybe either no thyroid meds are agreeing with me. I'm just intolerating all of them. I've exhausted mm -hmm. all my options. That thyroid 30 player we mentioned, she had gone through a few medications and was kind of getting to a point of, I don't really have anywhere mm -hmm. I to go from here. And also that thought in the back of our minds of, what if I couldn't get my medication? Then what? What, you know, is there anything we can do? Are we just, mm -hmm. what happens then? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm curious. It's, I mean, it's, it is, it's a great question. And I think a lot of times, you know, sometimes we'll stop in a moment and be like, oh my gosh, if this is helping me this much, I really want to have, make sure I can have access to this stuff so that I can keep feeling good. Um, and so it's a, you know, it's an important question. Um, there's, I mean, to some degree, 
it's I'm glad we got to talk some about the different thyroid options because if because it has happened before a few years ago there was a time period where we couldn't access um, nature thyroid for a period of time and and so luckily there are different um, products and brands and companies so for the luckily if if just one is not available you could probably switch to a different one and it might not be it may take a little tweaking right we might have to if you say switch to a different glandular formula or you have to switch to a compounded formula um, it may take a little time to kind of get the dose just right um, but um, you know usually we're able to switch to something else that eventually we can get close enough to where you were before. So that's one thing is just to know that there's enough thyroid options. I think it's pretty unlikely that we wouldn't have access to something. Right. Um, and there's also, I would say, um, also the consideration that, and I think we could really be saying this to ourselves at any point in time is, what can I do to help my thyroid function better? You know, like, yes, I'm, I, we want to make sure we have this thyroid replacement that, you know, we can fill in the gap as much as possible. But as another sort of backup plan is what else might I be able to do to help my thyroid function better so that I'm even less reliant on the mm -hmm. thyroid hormone filling in. Um, and so coming back to things like, um, you know, addressing thyroid antibodies and addressing the toxins in your environment and the leaky gut and, and the cortisol and adrenal function, you know, and the, and the nutrients that are important for the thyroid gland, like the thyroid gland requires iodine, it needs iron, um, needs selenium and zinc. You know, so sometimes that's why in the blood work, I would also check those things. How is your iron level? And when I check iron, I look at the ferritin, what's called ferritin, F-E-R-R-I-T-I-N, because that's your iron storage. If you have low iron, your thyroid's not going to be working well. And so it's going to, you're going to be more reliant on the hormone to fill in the gap. So that's just another perspective on it is, you know, it can kind of help us to go, wait a minute, how can I help my body do as good of a job as it can? So I'm less reliant on this external substance. And then, yeah, I think that um, at this point, anyway, there's enough other solutions that you could, you know, but I know it can be hard because not all practitioners are familiar with these different formulas. Mm -hmm. And so you might end up needing to, you might even ask your practitioner, hey, if I ever couldn't get access to this one that you're currently giving me, what else would you be able to offer? You know, just so you know how they would That's answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then if they say, I don't know what else, then you might want to go and find some other resources so you do have a backup plan because i think right having a backup plan usually kind of it's like having your pantry full <laughs> right it's right. like just in case i can't get to the grocery store for a couple of weeks i know i have some food so mm -hmm. same thing you might be like okay just in case i can't access my favorite thyroid what would be my second choice and that might be good for us all to just know that. Like, what would be my second option if I can't get my first option at any point in time? Well, and I think the other thing it really speaks to is the importance of finding the right doctor and working with someone like you who has such a, a great grasp of the whole big picture of people's health, you know, so that you can, like you said, maybe reduce the need for medication with some of those other factors like diet, lifestyle, mindset, stress management, mm -hmm. all those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, patients have, patients have amazed me over the years when they have said to me, I really want to not need this, this thyroid hormone. And I say to them, well, we're going to see, you know, let's, let's see what we can do. I, I, you know, i it, so much of it has to do with their body and all of these variables, right? So I say, what well, I hear that that's your goal is to be as least reliant on this external source of hormone as possible. So let's see how your body responds. And they've amazed me, the patients then who've be gotten to the point where their thyroid is functioning so much better that they don't need the hormone replacement anymore. And I'm like, wow, you know, that actually can, so they've showed me it's possible. Again, it really depends on the case and the situation, but it's worth knowing that that, that people have accomplished that where they can get it. So just because you've been on thyroid hormone replacement for a long time, doesn't mean that your thyroid can't improve its function. 
mm-hmm. which is which is good news. Mm-hmm. But the um, the common theme that seems to me uh, that makes me want to just kind of scream from the rooftops is that it's not an easy fix. Mm-hmm. It's it not. Isn't it's not. It just isn't. I know that the majority of the people out there just don't want to hear that. They just really don't. They want it to be the easy fix, but it just it isn't. And it's okay. Mm -hmm. right? It's okay because we're going to be going through changes no matter what anyway for our body. So don't beat yourself up and don't let that be this big hurdle. Like, oh my gosh, it's going to take so long, whatever. Because then what happens is everybody just lives with the symptoms. I know a lot of people, elderly people. Yes. Just take it as is. And this is just how it is. And it really doesn't have to be that way. You do have a choice. The thing is, the choice is you got to keep working with yourself. You gotta keep listening. You gotta kind of keep at it. You don't just get to sit back and go, okay, whoop, one pill. <laughs> I know it really. It's it's very true, and it reminds me that with the work you do with people, where they're uh, you know making some other lifestyle and diet changes, that sometimes the thyroid when it starts working better, it can kind of surprise you. You know, like it can almost be like, what was that? And you're like, oh. <laughs> My thyroid is working better. <laughs> so keeping that in mind too, if something feels like it's shifting, it could be that it's a good thing. And, you're, and yeah. your body's pretty smart and just listening to it, you know, like um, I talked to my doctor because I, um, I felt like the dose I was on and have been on for a while, um, I felt like I, I didn't need so much. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, asked her, I was like, can I, can I start, you know, reducing this down a little bit? And she said, absolutely. So we started um, taking down the, the dosage I'm on right now because I was just kind of listening to my body and thinking, mm-hmm. this is too much. So, well, well you might as well try it because then you can always retest. And if you drop too much, you can go back, you right? know? So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but that's a victory. And I know, Dana, we spend a lot of time together yeah. and I see you meditating daily, um, doing yeah. all kinds of different, you know, therapies you've eliminated grains that's been hugely helpful and a game changer for you you've totally changed your sleep habits Completely. which has been huge for you so that's a huge that's victory a high five victory thank you yes <laughs> i really do and i was like you know just all of a sudden i was like hey light bulb i think yeah. i need less medicine yeah yay that's a good thing <laughs> well this has been beyond informative. Thank you so much for being here with us today, Dr. Donnie. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. It really is. And it reminds me that I, my mom, by the way, has Hashimoto's um, thyroid and I have borderline low thyroid, but I have not yet ever tested positive for Hashimoto's. And um, so that also has been a part, relevant part of my interest in the thyroid and interest in, in this conversation. Um, and so I think just, you know, also saying that Like there's ways to address those antibodies and either turn them down or turn them off or prevent them from starting to begin with. And, and just, you know, I love just people realizing, wow, there's this whole other world of possibilities with the thyroid. You're not just, it's not just like a one size fits all thing. Yes, your body can respond and it could respond differently at any point in time. And we just need to go come back you know, to the drawing board, so to speak, and figure out, okay, what genetic factors, what stress exposure factors, what, what are the various factors, and let's solve this. It doesn't, you don't have to be stuck. Mm. So thank you. Yes, you don't have to be stuck. Too many of us are, and that's why we're all here, right? So thank you for sharing this mission with us to help thyroid patients and for sharing your wisdom and your expertise. We're so grateful and uh, for our listeners, you can find Dr. Donnie at drdonnie.com, and that's D-O-N-I. So thank you all for joining us for another episode of Thyroid Refresh TV, where we give you the inspiration and information you need to live thyroid healthy. You can receive a free Thyroid Thrivers Grocery Guide by visiting us at thyroidrefresh.com. And to learn more about Thyroid 30, our revolutionary 30-day wellness adventure, you can go to thyroidrefresh.com slash thyroid30. And always remember that you do have the power to heal, and we have the tools. 
And if you've enjoyed this podcast and would like to help us continue inspiring and empowering thyroid patients worldwide, please leave us a review on iTunes. It truly would make our day. It really helps. It does. Because you guys, you are what makes this community the amazing resource that it is. And we appreciate your listenership so much and your support. We're Dana and Jenny wishing you the best of health. See you next time. See you next time. Mm -hmm.